Hello everyone, my name is Quill and welcome to our first episode of Cybersecurity News Global. The first topic is Fink 12 targets 15 uh, at a massive rate. Mandiant intelligence suspect that Fink 12 might be partnered with Chitbot Rukan, which is the notorious gang since 2018 and October. Focus on high value targets, Fink 12 primarily uses Rook ransomware for data theft attacks. With hospitals being a popular target as seen during the pandemic, around 20% of the casualties are in the need of medical attention. Finance, education, industries and information technology are among the other industries targeted. It is aimed at major businesses with yearly revenue of more than $300 million, with an average of about $6 million. According to the data, Fin12 in intrusions have accounted for roughly 20% of incident response engagement since September 2020. Fin12 was also seen releasing Conti ransomware in one of the attacks, extorting twice from the victim for stolen 90 GB of data in a one-off. The majority of Fin12's victim in the last two years were from North America, 71% in the US and 12% in Canada. This year, the group has broadened its reach by focusing on businesses in Australia, Indonesia, Colombia, France, Ireland, and Philippines, Spain, South Korea, and the United Arab Emirates, and the United Kingdom. Experts predict Fin12 will continue to adapt and expand its operations, which include data theft and extortion. Furthermore, the organization is always refining its strategies, approaches, and procedures. As a result, experts advise using a multi-layer security architecture to resist such assaults early on. Japanese telecom users' credentials are stolen by fake Android apps. According to the study, attackers set up numerous domains to promote fake Android software from telecommunicators operators. The malware infected uh, spoof software uh, grabs login information and session cookies. During this effect, researchers identified over 29,000 credentials cookies for 797 Android and 2,141 Apple mobile devices. The program requests a few permission in order for the attacker to acquire information about the device's network connections. When a malicious program is launched, it prompts users to connect to cellular network while turning off Wi-Fi. The false app directs you to the official website to the telecommunications payment service. Because subscription is confirmed, the consumer is given a network PIN pin number. This pin is used by subscribers to verify this identity or update their certain settings. To entice victims, the software displays the official payments URL in web view and masks malicious strings to prevent reverse engineering and discovery. After the information is stolen, it is transferred over a simple mail transfer protocol to an attacker's email address, SMTP. Conclusion Phishing is a typical but effective approach that involves impersonating an official program of a popular software. Furthermore, the perpetrators of malicious uh, Android apps employ a variety of ways to avoid detection by so security software. The National Security Agency NSA advises against using wildcard TLS certificates. The National Security Agency NSA is issued a warning on the usage of wildcard TLS 
self certificates which can be used to carry out the TLS assaults application layer protocol contained confusion attack. Cyber criminals can use wildcards TLS certificates to decrypt TLS encrypted traffic according to the NSA. Anyone with a private key attached to the wildcard certificate can spoof the sites and obtain access to passwords and sensitive information. However, if an attacker uses the approach to hack a server, they can compromise the entire organization. Due to the use of wildcard certificates, the alpaca attack was revealed in June and can be exploited. Google issued 50,000 alerts to consumers about hacking backed by the government. According to Google, over 50,000 warnings have been delivered to users whose accounts have been the subject of government-backed phishing or malware attempts so far in 2021, up roughly 33% over the same period in 2020. Some of the more prominent campaigns interrupted by the company this year came from a different government-backed attacker, APT35, an Iranian outfit that regularly conducts phishing campaigns targeting high-risk consumers, according to the report. Since 2017, APT35 has used this method to target high-value accounts in government, academia, journalism, non-governmental organization, foreign policy, and national security. APT35 attempted to transfer spyware to the Google Play Store last May, according to Google. The app was disguised as VPN software that could take sensitive data from smartphones including call logs, text messages, contacts and lo location data if loaded. Google soon identified the app and deleted it from the Play Store before anyone can install. Hi everyone, thanks for watching this news. If you really liked it, thumbs it up and if you really love it, subscribe to this channel and please stay tuned. It will be all cybersecurity news for you all.